This is a demo of a new rack extension called Glitch. Now Glitch has a number of effects that are common to the Glitch style, but it also allows you to use your own effects. So let's see how it works. This is the Glitch effect. It's hooked up to a Dr. Octorex. This is just the default drums that are uh, enabled when you open up a Dr. Octorex. So let's go ahead and play this and see how it sounds. So that's just the standard sound. We've got five effects here, shuffle, stutter, gate, tape stop, and reverse. So let's quickly just listen to these. Shuffle cuts up the previous measure's worth of audio material and then randomly plays those segments in random order. We've got stutter, which just repeats a segment. We've got gate, which turns on and off a gate. Tape stop. And we've got reverse. Now let's talk a little bit more about each one of these. First, all of these effects have a resolution. So if we listen to gate, for example, the resolution is 1 16th. We play that and we hear it turned on and off every 16th note. We can change that from half a note to 30 second note. And we can do that on all of these effects. So if we listen to shuffle, what shuffle does is it takes the previous measures worth of material and cuts it up into a number of segments, in this case 16 segments, and then randomly plays through those 16 segments. We can change that. Stutter. Reverse. Similar to Shuffle, it takes the previous measures material, cuts it up to, in this case, 16 pieces, but plays through those pieces in order, but reverses each individual segment. Now tape stop, because tape stop doesn't really have much to do with segments or measures, instead of uh, time synced uh, differences, it's just uh, a smooth dial. So it, tape stop can go from very quick to very slow. Okay, so those are the five effects and the resolutions for each of these. Now there's this random section over here. To enable each effect, you just click the enable uh, or So enable random, it randomly selects these five. And depending on the resolution, right now it's quarter notes. So every quarter note, it'll randomly select one of those five. And it'll play it. Now the resolutions that are currently selected, those will be the ones that are always selected. So in fact, every time it gets to gate, it'll always play the gate at a resolution of the 16th note. If you want to randomize the resolution as well, then you select the randomized dials. And now not only is the selection of the effect random, but the resolution of the individual effects are random. Now there's another set of dials here called probability. If you, uh, if you want shuffle, for instance, to play more often than any of these others, you just increase its probability. And now shuffle should play more often than all these others. 
You can see this in more extreme sense if you drop down the probability of all the others. You'll see how shuffle is playing much more often than any of the others. That's because we have very low probabilities for these four and a very high probability for this one. Now if you wanted something to never play, if you never wanted the tape stop to play, just drop its probability to zero. In that case, it'll never ever play. And we can see this a little more obviously if we even out the probabilities for everything else and we increase the resolution for the random choices. Notice that the tape stop light never lights up, but all the others do. But as soon as we bring up the probabilities, then it will stop. All right. Now, if you've seen any of my other effects, you know that when I use probabilities and randomness, I also use a C. What happens is, if you if you set up your random dials to where you like them, they will always play the same. So, for instance, let's stop this and start from the beginning. Start it again from the beginning. Start it again from the beginning. You notice that it's the same sequence each time. It starts with the shuffle, and then the gate, and then the stutter and the tape stop. Shuffle, gate, stutter, tape stop. Even though this is random, it's random, but only, uh, only once you take into account all of the dials of the effect at any particular time. If you change a probability here, then we no longer get shuffle, gate, stutter, tape, stop. We get something else. Let's start from the beginning again. Gate, reverse, gate, shuffle. Gate, reverse, gate, shuffle. So we changed the dial and we got a completely different pattern, but it's the same pattern every time you start from the beginning again. Well now, let's say you have the dials exactly where you want them to be, but you don't like the fact that it starts with the gate. You want it to start with something else, whatever else, randomly, but you just don't like this particular choice of randomness. Just change the seed, and now let's start from the beginning again. So now it's a completely different pattern, but let's start again. And you hear it's the same thing. Start again. Now if we liked all of our dial positions, but we didn't like this actual implementation of it, let's just change the seed to something else. And now we've got a completely different one. But now if we start this again, we see it's the same pattern. So hopefully that's a better explanation of probabilities and seeds. Okay? So we've got our five effects. Now we also have these four external effects. These are ways that you can add in your own sounds, your own effects, to uh, include in the, the glitch effect. So for instance, let's say we wanted to add a scream, okay? We'll just get rid of these. We'll add our sends and then our returns. Turn it around and we can start playing again. Now, it will, if we just stop this enable, then let's hear this, the extent, the external one. That's what it sounds like when it goes through Scream. Okay. Now, if we enable the random, notice that it never plays these externals because these probabilities are at zero. But as soon as we turn up a probability, we hear it comes in. So this way you can extend Glitch to ha have four additional effects, or in fact you can completely turn off all of these effects and just use Glitch as a random choice between your four new effects. So in fact you don't have to use this for Glitch sound at all. You could use this just to switch between one or two or three or four different effects that have nothing to do with Glitch sounds or Glitch effects. One other thing I should note is that all of these enable dials are mapped to the 
keyboard. So if we bring up Reason's keyboard, we turn Enable off. Let's select, I think we have to make a track for this. So now we make a track for Glitch. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Sorry about that. There we go. So we can see that the enables are mapped to C3 through D4. So that's the glitch effect. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email on the board. I'm usually there.